Hello and welcome back. This is Sherry with Heart and Soulful in the studio today. I am still working on the Bohemian style stacked envelope junk journal with a travel theme. So if you've been following along, thank you for sticking with me on this crazy road trip. Um, I have been kind of bouncing around, I know, and just the last episode made a huge U-turn in my journal. And I appreciate all of you of you who have commented on it. Um, it seems like a lot of my new subscribers are finding me for, and watching old videos. So I think the people that are watching this series have already been following me for a while. So I think maybe you get that I kind of jump around, I come up with ideas randomly and um, just trying to do this project. So the last couple of days have been like that for me too. Once I finished this uh, cover that was kind of a bear for me, I kind of needed, to, didn't know what my next part was going to be. So I've kind of regrouped a little bit just because of comments and um, different tips and requests that I've been getting um, for like scanning in my papers and offering them in my Etsy shop and that kind of thing. I'm really new to all this and I only started doing paper craft kind of thing in like May, June, and actually that was learning how to do mixed media art. So I've only been doing it for a short time, and then I started the channel in August when I had finished my first journal and I wanted to share it with my Facebook page. I had no intention, no idea I was gonna start a YouTube channel. So that's kind of how I came about, and it's been a great journey, and I'm having a lot of fun with it. And I'm just still overwhelmed by that people are finding it and watching. So thank you. Um, if you are following me for the very first time, uh, welcome. I hope if you like this video that you'll give me a thumbs up and hit subscribe if you don't want to miss anything. Uh, at the end of this video, I'm going to kind of just do a little show and tell. I do that sometimes of other things that I'm working on because I also make jewelry and I knit and I um, do just all kinds of things and this whole paper craft thing, marrying that with my jewelry techniques is even having me come up with other new products and things to offer in my Etsy shop. So today I am gonna, I have an actual page I'm gonna show you in this, in this journal, um, but I wanna back up for just a second because I have had people ask for different things. And uh, I'm learning all this computer stuff, the my Cricut, I have don't have a lot of experience. So I'm trying to learn how to do things on my Cricut that, that will help with these projects. And also I'm just learning Adobe Illustrator. And so it's a lot going on right now in my poor little head. So I'm, I'm trying to do my best to get some things that are uh, helpful for you. And one of those things, I, am, I listed this and a couple of other things on the last video uh, that was this, um, the carpet bag cover. So I've listed those there. I'll try to remember to put these links uh, where you can download these things in each video. Um, and then I'm thinking maybe at the end, maybe I do a whole package that I put in my Etsy shop. I don't know. So I do have a prompt list. Um, that was kind of helpful to me once I came up with my theme. Uh, it was helpful for me to have just kind of a list of things that I might want to put into my journal. Uh, because I was working with just kind of a, a blank slate, I started out with making my stacked envelope uh, por portion of my journal with just blank book page because I didn't have a theme at that point. I didn't know what I was going to do. So I, this was really a blank slate and it took me a little bit to figure out a theme for my for my book. So now that I've done that, you can actually take this prompt list and I think it'll be helpful with regardless of what style you're using. Um, it's just really for travel things. So I'm gonna have that in there. And then, like I said, I did uh, for the carpet bag, I decided I needed to do instructions. I kind of did this as I was doing the bag um, because I was afraid it was something I was making up as I went along and I, I I knew I wouldn't maybe remember how to put it together myself if I didn't have instructions. So I went ahead and, and did that and, and typed that out too. So this is also um, a link that you can print this out and I'll, I'll include that. And then um, I also did a template 
it's kind of um, rudimentary because like I said, I'm just learning how to use all this stuff. Uh, so this is also just gonna be a free printable in case you want to just have a pattern that you can cut out for the parts for that bag. So I have that. And then I had mentioned in one of the other videos uh, when I did the passport one that I had I had put quotes in the passport in every page. And when I did it, I just made um, individual little, oh, this isn't the passport, where'd it go? It's in here. I had just made quotes that I put on every page and I kind of just did them myself and printed them out on my Xyron and it stuck them with my Xyron. And I thought that might be nice to have be stickers. Well, it took me a little bit to learn how to do that, uh, a couple days actually, because I had never done that before. So I've made um, all the travel quotes on stickers. I do need to get some different sticker sheet because this one turns out it's in pieces on the back in kind of strips and I didn't like that. So I need to find some sticker paper that is all a solid sheet on the back. So if anybody has any recommendations, please let me know in the comments um, because I haven't ordered any yet, but I need to do that. And then I'll offer these um, already on sticker sheets. And I may also put it in case you wanted to do your own, I don't know, maybe not sticker, just on a, sh on a sheet you can print out. I don't know. Let me know what you'd like about that. Um, and I'll include that. And then I thought, well, while I'm at it, I might as well include that map that I used on the back of my, in inside my passport. Um, the pages have kind of a the map background. And so this is what I used in that tutorial. So I thought I can include that too. Now that I've learned how to do this. And then this one is going to be for today's uh, tutorial, okay? So this is what we're gonna work on. And then um, at the very end of the video, I'm gonna share with you just kind of some other things I've been working on. It's, it's kind of fun, just a little show and tell time. So if you stick by till the end, you can maybe see some of the other um, non-paper related even things that I do. Okay, so today though, we're gonna do a boarding pass inspired pocket and um, inserts for that pocket. Now, when I made mine, my first one, I hadn't done this yet. I just went online and looked for free printable boarding passes. And you could put them into Adobe Illustrator and uh, add your, you know, to kind of change them. I couldn't figure out on this one how to change this. All I could figure out how to do, because at that point I was just learning, all I could figure out how to do is to fill in those blanks. So that's all I really did on this one. But once I had it finished and I was kind of learning how to use uh, my Adobe Illustrator, I thought, you know, this doesn't look too hard. I'm gonna see if I could actually make my own boarding pass in my own style to fit my book. And then that way I can offer it to you as a printable. So. I did that, that after I had already made my things. So I found which page on my book that I wanted to have be my boarding pass. Um, I'm trying to kind of go back and make this into kind of a story through my travel thing. So I thought, well, I have my passport here. I still haven't finished this page, but when you are gonna travel, you need your luggage, which now I've done that. Um, tickets, maybe an itinerary, your boarding pass, that kind of stuff. So I thought, I'll put my boarding pass here. I did have a request um, because I did not do this on camera that the next time I do a page to please do it on camera so you can see how I attach them to my already made envelopes. So I'm gonna do that today. So for this page, I just started out with finding one of my mixed media papers and if you've been watching this series, you know I've been making all these uh, mixed media papers that are just on a uh, book page. And now I'm figuring out that I need to maybe scan all these in to my computer before I start cutting them up because uh, people might, I may, might be able to make like a master board with it or something like that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. But I chose one of my uh, mixed media papers that I liked the colors of. Um, that would fit on this. And then I just cut it, I just kind of measured, and I don't mind if my text is gonna show around a little bit, because like I've mentioned before, I 
I kind of want there to be subtle hints that I only used book page for this. So I just kind of roughly measured. And then when I did that, I didn't notch this out yet um, because I wanted to make sure I kind of dry fit it and then punched it. I was gonna do it after I glued it, but I thought, well, I'm gonna go ahead and, and punch it out now. So it, you know, I've just been using my um, two inch. You can use any size punch to do that. It's just a circle punch. So I, I basically cut my paper how I wanted it to fit and then just uh, punched to match what I had already punched here. Okay, so that's just my background. And then I needed it to be a pocket. So I went ahead before I did this pocket and I made what was gonna go in the pocket. I do that because I want, if, I want my pocket to maybe not hide certain embellishment so that you see that, the pretty part sticking out. So I went ahead and had made my pocket first before I finish that. So I'm gonna set that aside for a minute. Now, when I did the boarding pass, like I said, I, I hadn't made my own yet. So I just went and I found one in kind of colors that I liked because I wasn't sure I would be able to figure out how to change those on uh, in Adobe because I'm brand new. So I only filled in what I could figure out in that short time, this was a few days ago and decided I was gonna make that into a journal card. I thought that would be cute. So I went ahead, printed it out. It did not have these rounded corners. In fact, I think somewhere, what did I do with it? I had one. No, I didn't have it out there. Let's see, oh, here it is. It basically came out just as a rectangle with sharp corners when I printed it out. So I decided I wanted to make it look like an actual boarding pass. And to me, that means this part tears off and the corners are rounded maybe just to kind of make it a little fancier, I guess. So all I did uh, to make this thicker was I took a couple of book page pages, I think I did two, and I have made up ahead of time some book pages that I've put a coat of gesso on, so it's just one one layer. And then I just did a, a coat of gesso so it's writable. So I've put maybe two on this just to make it a little sturdier uh, with maybe a plain one in between. So get it to the kind of the thickness. And I only say, you know, I can't say two, three or whatever. It depends on how thick your book page is. Some of the book pages I'm using are thicker than others. So I think this might be two, two, two or three uh, to get to this thickness of this particular book. Then I wanted to make it um, be perforated like it could tear. So how I do that, and I've shown this before, you can't really see it in this one because it's getting kind of worn now. I take my sewing machine and I take the thread out and then I just stitch with a needle with no thread just to punch holes that make it kind of perforated. I don't really want to tear this off, but I just like it to look authentic like a boarding pass. So I've done that and then I, once I've done that, I just fold that where the line is and then that way I can take my corner punch and for this one, I think I used the middle sized one, which for mine is seven millimeter. And then I just put it in there and punched it to get those rounded corners. And then I just aged it with my vintage photo. So that's all I've done to that, um, to be just a little journal card that's gonna go in that pocket that I'm making. So I'm gonna set that aside. Then I decided after I had done that, get rid of this, that I wanted to make um, because it had this flap, I started looking at it thinking that looks like an envelope flap. So if I do something here, I could actually make an envelope out of this too. So I did the same kind of process, except that I only used a layer of book page with no gesso on it. Because like I said before, I want that hint of that I'm only using book page. And then I just, uh, used some book page, a, a piece that didn't have, you know, like on the bottom of a page doesn't have any print text. I just used that and then I just used um, a stamp with my archival ink. Um, and then this one's black soot that I used uh, just to stamp that. 
And then I used, for the inside, this color, I had used my vintage photo. And I like that, but I wanted to kind of brighten it up a little bit. So I used um, this Distress Oxide Picked Raspberry over the top of that. And I just liked that combination. I thought that was nice. So that kind of matched um, my little paper that I had picked out. And again, that was just one of my um, mixed media papers. I just I took a section that I you know, liked for, for the card that I was gonna put in here. We'll take that out for a second. It just looks good, I thought, with the orange and stuff that was on my boarding pass. So I just took one piece, and again, I just notched it here so that I can get in there with another smaller circle punch. And then I used, this is just a little embellishment. I did not make this, but I just uh, glued it on with some strong uh, mixed media adhesive. This is Aileen's that I used. So that was just to get my, kind of my envelope portion. And... This is my boarding pass, you can see still. And then I just wanted to embellish it to kind of not be so obvious a boarding pass. So uh, where it said ready for takeoff, I just used a gold pen to kind of make this more my exotic bohemian feel. And then I didn't want where it said this Jaden's Jetway, I didn't want that to show on my envelope. So I just used a strip of my mixed media scrap and put that there. And then I put another scrap down here just to kind of dress it up. And then I had a couple of stamps. These are real stamps. In fact, I may scan. I've got a whole thing of uh, stamps from all over the world that I may scan um, and have those be a printable too. And then this was another piece of my mixed media uh, paper that I made. And then I've done some slow stitching on it. Uh, and then it was just a square, so I wanted to kind of dress it up a little bit more. So I just added some ribbon. I, I just like this um, this little edge. So that's, you just see that little edge poking out, but that's what that was, was just some ribbon. So that was my little embellishment. So I had a little envelope and I thought, okay, I have a boarding pass, two boarding passes for my book. And now maybe I need to put something inside here for journaling. So I thought, how about a ticket? So I did kind of the shape of, you know, uh, tickets, but, and they're perforated, so they'll tear apart kind of from a ticket roll. I just made it really big. So to do that, I'll show you how I did that. Put this aside, get rid of this. So I took, again, um, just some book page. This book page is a little thicker than the other one. So this one has just two, two sheets was all it took to make it this stiff. And I've got two coats of gesso on one side. And then I used just glue stick to put these together. In fact, this one's kind of coming apart, so I need to add a little bit of glue. And if you've watched my other videos, you know I've been just using this Elmer's Skull purple one. I like it because I can see where I've put it. I did order some Scotch brand because someone told me that was a really better one. Um, and it, I should be getting it maybe tomorrow. Um, I've been looking for it here and I can't find it anywhere that we carry where I live to buy it. So I, I finally broke down and just ordered some on Amazon so I could try it out. Um, so that's glued down. Um, I've also shown that I iron those usually to kind of get the glue to spread everywhere and dry out faster. So I have that piece. And then I've kind of just marked halfway. I went ahead on this one and took it a further step for you. Um, I decided I needed the back to be decorative. I didn't want it to just show book page because you can kind of see the book that it's book page through here. So I wanted to put my mixed media paper. So I just found a scrap that, um, that was about the size of this piece that I needed and just glued it on and then took it again to my sewing machine to give me that perforation. And then I fold this in half and to get those little notches. But while it's folded in, <clears throat> in half, I'll just go and kind of take out a corner. And this is just my regular binder size hole punch, but when you do that, it kind of makes that little notch and then I'll do these corners as if they were attached to another one. So that's my ticket shape. 
And then I would uh, use my Distress Oxide and Vintage Photo like I do and just get my edges. And this is kind of all, it kind of tones down some of the dark, the brightness and gets it kind of that darker jewel tone, which I'm kind of trying to put some of that in my book now. Um, since I did that carpet bag cover and it came out pretty dark with a lot of gold on it. I'm trying to kind of get it all to look cohesive now. Inking, inking, inking. <clears throat> I have gotten so much done today though. I hope you wait, wait till the end to, so you can see I've been I've made paper, I have um, worked on jewelry today. I'm working on some buttons, a custom order for some buttons that I needed to do. I have more I need to get listed on my Etsy shop. And my first international shipment finally arrived. I was so happy. Um, I had not shipped internationally before. And then in doing this, um, you know, because YouTube is such a wider audience, um, I had requests to do that, so I was kind of scared, but it wasn't it wasn't too bad. Etsy makes it really easy, um, but it did take a lot longer than I thought. It took, uh, she ordered on January the 3rd, I think. I shipped it out the 4th, and she just got it on the 15th, I want to say, of February. And that went to, uh, from here in Nevada to London. So, But she was very patient. She must have ordered before from here because she was very patient, and she was less worried about it than I was. So I was just worried I had done something wrong, but it arrived, she's a happy customer. So uh, if you ever find anything like on my jewelry website, I don't ship internationally from there because it's not as, as easy. I can move something over to my Etsy shop um, and to do the transaction there, so that's easier. So if you ever do see anything, just send me a message and I'll, I'll make it happen. Okay, so there's my, my ticket base. And then for the inside of my ticket, um, and I had done this on the little tickets that I did on the elephant. Uh, I just drew my with my a little uh, archival pen. This one, let's see, this is probably the one I used. It's just a fine line uni pen. It's um, water and fade proof. I just take that, and then you can eyeball. Or these rulers are very handy because they have a. Um, it's a sewing ruler, Fiskars, and it has a quarter inch line that goes this way, every quarter inch, so you can really line up your lines. So I'm just gonna lay that down. And if you're afraid to do this uh, with the pen right away, uh, just do it in pencil first, because I'm only eyeballing how far to go this way. And I think this just kind of gives it that, you know, kind of old fashioned vintagey looking ticket sort of thing. You can find, um, Tim Holtz has uh, ticket uh, packs. And I have some of those and I actually started to use those for this project and then I realized, no, I really should just make them out of book page because that's my challenge for myself. So I've really been trying to stick to um, only using book page. My my uh, boarding pass that I did, I did an exception and just printed it on copy paper, but I used book page to strengthen it, so I think that counts. And um, I did print I did print it off the internet, but it's not like a digi kit or anything that I took. Um, and then now that I've done my own, I really don't feel guilty. But I wish I, I wish I would have done it first so I could have used it for my, my journal. And then I just did a half an inch um, at one end of each ticket uh, to put the number. And actually, now that I say that, it might be, I'm not sure that that is, yeah, half an inch. And then I just used, um, if you have smaller tickets, I would have used something like this, you know, for the date that I went on that particular trip. Uh, but that was really small for this size ticket. 
So I had some number stamps, these little clear ones that you just stick on a little block. And so I just used those. You had to do them one at a time, but um, that way I could put the date that I, uh, what I did for mine was I put the date, knocking things off here. I put the date I left and the date I returned. So I have a, a go ticket and a return ticket. So that's just kind of an idea, you know, if you're not having a specific trip, you can put dates that are someone's birthday or whatever. But I always like the date. I always like numbers to have some meaning for myself. So I did that. And then on the back side here, I just, even though it was decorative, I just wanted to, you know, decorate it more. So I just kept it simple though. And this is another stamp that I had. And I am not good at stamping, like I'm not good at stenciling. So I tend to stamp onto something else first and then attach it. I had actually stamped on this too, just to see if I liked how it looked um, on my mixed media. And it just kind of got lost because this paper is so busy. So I'm only mentioning that because if you're new to all this like I was, and you don't think about doing, you know, you're too afraid to stamp right on something. I don't mind trying it because I don't know what it's going to look like because I know I can always cover it up with something else because, uh, you know, I've always said layering is a good thing. So I did go ahead and stamp it on here. And like I said, I just felt like it was too busy and got lost. So I stamped it on a book page uh, and just to kind of practice and see how my stamping was going to be. So I do that. And this is a really good idea that I did because I'm not afraid to admit that this was supposed to say admit but I had these letter stamps that you put on the block and they're these same kind of clear things. So it was really kind of backwards. And so I flipped them all totally backwards as I was putting them on. So I was so happy that I had stamped it on a book page first. I ended up uh, doing it in a couple of lines and I did leave it on book page with text. So you can kind of see that, but that's just um, me and live and learn. So I have my little ticket that's gonna go in my little envelope here, my little boarding pass envelope. So once I had this, then I knew um, what it looked like to see how I wanted my pocket to go. So I'll get rid of that. Let's see if I can do this without getting glue on my thing here. Maybe I'll tie this back here. I've kind of been bad about accidentally getting glue on my tie. So I'll do that. Okay, so we're on this page. And to do this uh, little pocket, I wanted it to be just a little tuck because I, I, I really liked this and I wanted it to show up in my book. So I could have went straight across, but you know, I try to mix up how I, how I do them. So I just decided that little flower thing looked good with everything. And so I was just gonna make that be my pocket. And all that was is somewhere in these papers. When I do these papers, I kind of do a, a, a embellishment of some kind like this, and I don't put it on the whole page. So like this, if it went the right direction, could also be a little tuck like that. So when I'm doing these, I don't really know how they're gonna be used, but like this could end up being a, a pocket also. So that's kind of, I went through my papers to see what I had going the right direction in the right spot. And this fit perfect, because then it didn't cover up my um, stenciling completely. So to make this thick enough though, because with it, having these points and all, it was gonna be kind of delicate. This has about four uh, pieces of book page on it. And then I also thought it would be nice. Um, these are pretty matte finished my because I'm just using uh, flat acrylic paints. So you can kind of see they're, they're not shiny at all, which is, is a nice way to start because then you have an option of making them shinier or not so that you can get some con kind of some contrast in the sheens in your book too. Uh, because I'm making all my papers, I'm just trying to find as many ways as I can alter them uh, to not have it look too redundant. So I have uh, this one, I put just one coat of matte Mod Podge on it. So it has some sheen, but it's not really shiny. 
And then on this embellishment, you can see maybe, if you can, that it's really shiny compared to this one. I put a gloss Mod Podge on this one. And I don't know if you can see in here, it also has a little bit of a sparkle to it. I show this all the time because I just love it. But it's from Imagine, it's called Sheer Shimmer Craft Spray. And it's really fine, just a fine shimmer. And just one spray, one or two sprays on anything will give that a little sparkle. So I, I tend to use it on things like this label, that kind of thing, to try to just have sparkle here or there. So I did that on this little embellishment also. And then, I don't know if you can see that those are little raised things. I hadn't tried these before. Uh, but I had seen someone else use them. They're liquid pearls. These are by Ranger. And you can get the liquid pearls are kind of just an opalescent. These are in gold. And then this one, I actually got a couple, two different um, three packs. One had three, three different colors of liquid pearls. And the other one had like another color of liquid pearls and these stickles, which are glitter glue. So I used both of these just to give my uh, pocket just a little more embellishment because I had never used these before and I wanted to try them out. And they do look like little pearls. Now, I think the one thing I would do differently is I used my, my glitter spray and these pearls. I put them on first and then I decided to do the glossy Mod Podge. I think it would be better in the reverse to do the glossy Mod Podge first, then spray my glitter and then do my little liquid uh, pearls. So that's just uh, next time I'll do it that way. So that was my, that's for my pocket. And then this will go in here. And then this is actually a pocket, my book page, because this is the envelope. If I can get it apart here. And that's where my other uh, boarding pass card can go. And then I can also put other things but that's kind of what the plan was. So I'm just gonna glue this down now because I said I would get rid of that. So all I do is I've been using just my matte Mod Podge. You can use whatever um, glue that you like where you live. I live in a very dry climate and this one seems to be working fine for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put it on here. And you can see that I have already inked all my edges that might peek out. I did the whole book like that before I even started, um, mostly because I had no idea what I was gonna do and I was stalling. I was trying to get just all those little basic things done, hoping I would get inspired. And it took me a little bit, but I think I finally, I finally did and I'm finally really happy with my theme and the memories that it brings back as I'm working on it. Okay, so I just glued that down because it was all finished. Now, if I, oh, I actually did. I was gonna say, if I wanted to do stitching on this, I should have done it beforehand, but I actually did. I just didn't mention it. So I had taken this to my sewing machine. And really, any time that I've been doing uh, corner pockets especially, I like to sew them in because uh, when you have little fine parts like this, you know, it's easy when you put things in and out for those to come up. So it's just, um, I think if you have a sewing machine, it's it's better to, to, do, to do that. It's funny because I had seen, I see comments occasionally like, I don't know how to sew, I don't know how to use a sewing machine. What else could I do to make this or whatever it is? And it's especially funny when it is a sewing project, but I don't do it, but because I think it sounds snarky. But I always want to say, learn how to sew because it's really not, learn how to use a sewing machine. I think I should do a tutorial on that, a cheap sewing machine. It would take you about five minutes to learn how to actually thread it and do it. It's not scary. And um, there's probably YouTube videos out there already for that. Um, but I just think it's so worth it because it just adds so much to your projects. Okay, so really, I just glued that down, and because I don't have a lot of bulk and things going on in my book, um, it, I, it, you know, I'm not trying to work over anything too lumpy, so it, it wasn't hard. If you do have something that is just, this, <clears throat> say this is really thick, and you're just worried about it sticking, 
I use these bulldog clips. These are about one inch, maybe inch and a half, I guess. And I would just run those all around the edge so that it's it gets stuck down. And sometimes you do need to do that if you've done stitching and it's so it's made it kind of lumpy instead of really flat then you might need to do this just to get it um, the pressure you want to make that stick down really well. But because I'm not, this this was just a decorative cover for my actual pocket. It's not my actual pocket, you know what I mean? It's just the cover of it. So I'm not too worried about it. I think it's gonna be good. Oops. Okay, so I have my cute little boarding pass envelope. And then my other thing will fit in here. And then I can add more. I don't wanna to add too much as I go along. I'll add more later on if I can, because I have a feeling this is gonna get really big anyway. So this is my little fan that goes here. And then I've kind of changed, you know, there's a couple things missing. I, I, I think I'm gonna put these at the end. So I hadn't decorated those pockets yet. So I'm, I'm gonna hang on to these two things. So you can go and see uh, from the beginning, I'll put the, the link in the description for this whole series uh, so that you can find it and watch it from the beginning. And if you watch the, uh, if you do watch it from the beginning, there is a note in the description it, at the construction video of this because I took a huge U-turn in the last episode and I totally took my file folder off and did this carpet bag cover. That's not originally how I had it. I actually had it opening this way. So if you're gonna do this project, read the descriptions, like I said, in each, each one, because there may be a note of how I changed something as I went along. So I apologize for that, but I think it turned out better to do it this way. So at least for my theme. Okay, so if you've hung with me this far, I was gonna show a couple things, other things that I had been working on. So a couple of videos ago, I did a tutorial on uh, making feathers because somebody had asked. And it's kind of, I made it kind of in the middle of all of these. I'm gonna use this just to set it on white. Um, in this journal process, but I think I might end up using some of these in my journal since it's a bohemian theme. But I wanted to show these uh, because if you watch that video, you just might be curious at how many coats they get after. This one probably had four coats. This was an older feather that I had already started working on. I've just continued it in this batch. All of these, this one, all of these only have one coat of resin on each side. So I, I just wanted to show that so you can see the flexibility of it. Um, I'm gonna do more on these. I did a follow-up video where I showed how I kind of cleaned these up a little bit. So I'll put the link to the to the resin feather videos too, but this is kind of just the stage that they're at now until I do a next pour. So all of these just had two coats on, one one coat on each side. Okay, so that was something I pulled off today because I need to work on these and some buttons. I was really happy though that my buckles, if you've been watching um, any of these videos where I've been doing the resin things, I had made some buckles. I actually have used one on my, on my scrapbook. This was only maybe after two coats of resin on it because I, I wasn't gonna have it be functional, it was just decorative. So that's with maybe two coats of resin. Well, then I did probably, I probably have four on each side of this, but you can see it's made it really sturdy now. So this could actually be a functional buckle on a book or something. So uh, I wanted to show those, how thick those got. And then um, I made a whole bunch of, where did they go? I'm just dropping everything today. I've got my pile somewhere here of rings. Oh, right in front of me, there was a snake. Okay, so these also are, probably have maybe four coats on each side. So you can see how sturdy they are. They're, I, I could probably force bend them, but I think they're good now. So I'm gonna, I think, make necklaces out of these. Um, you know, with the little tassel, beaded tassels. And I've done some with rings like this, 
where it's like crocheted, teeny, teeny, tiny crocheted strands in, with beads in them. So these might end up something like that. But I wanted to show, um, in case you saw those old videos or want to go back and watch them, um, they're in my series of marrying uh, jewelry with paper craft series, uh, which so far all those projects have to do with ice resin. So those were some, and these, you know, even if you don't do jewelry, but you do paper craft, you can do these because it's just paper and resin. That's it. No metal, you know, forming or anything like that. So um, that's those. Those could be cute earrings too. And when I made the circle um, of those, I ended up with um, all of these. I made this by using two different size circle punches. So you, you make the small circle first, punch that out. So now these can all be uh, little buttons and they have a variety of thicknesses. This one just has a couple. Some of them I wanted to be able to use a punch and just punch through so that I could use them for little closures on these coin style uh, envelope closures. So I have these now that I can use and these buckles and circles. So all these things can be used in this journal because uh, they go and they're all made out of book page. Uh, for my mixed media papers. So I did the feathers today. I've done those today. I've made paper today. Um, I use this. This is all from book page two. Um, I just put some turquoise colored dye in there because I didn't, it was kind of a gray color if you use just old book page. So I use this for my packaging for my jewelry. Uh, so I made more paper today. And I get it dry that fast because I have a um, a dryer that has where you can stack sweaters. I can stack like five trays and so I don't have to let it go outside overnight kind of thing because it would not work here. I live in the forest. I wouldn't have a place to put it and it's too cold and wet to dry. So then the other thing I took, I just took these out of the tumbler. Um, recently I had a request to make some more of these earrings. So these are in I have to get the pairs together and put the little ear wires on still. And then these can have uh, tassels of beads hung down. I've done them where I'll have like maybe just a large bead there or a chain with lots of beads. There's all kinds of different ways. I mostly sell them plain like this though because then they can be a, an everyday kind of earring. So I've got sterling silver. I already have copper on my website. In fact, I think I put a pair in my Etsy shop too just for the heck of it. And then these are in bronze. So these all just came out of the tumbler today. So I've got bronze, sterling silver, and copper. So I'll get all these put together and listed. And then I threw some of my own stuff in there just, um, just because it needed a little polish. And just, I can kind of show you some other things I do. I wanna maybe do, uh, I need to make up a bunch more of these. I do this, uh, I call it, uh, artisan silver in my website, but it's uh, the same, uh, it's silver that does not contain lead, but it's the same stuff that you'd use for like doing stained glass leaded things, but there's no lead in it. So uh, anyway, it's, it's, it's just, I like it because it makes kind of a very organic, you're working with liquid metal basically to make this on a, on an armature of silver, of sterling silver. So these are just a couple of things that I also do. And then some rings, you know, I, in my videos, you'll see I wear this. I never take this off. It's copper. And where's the copper one? This one's also copper, but look at the color difference. And this came, just came out of the polisher, but you age it and then polish it. Um, I, I did this one, I think without, uh, using my flux shaft polisher but this one I wear all the time and it, so it's kind of stays that, does not turn my finger green, um, but that's just another similar one. And then I do some that are, I call a nest ring with um, kind of a little nest, but a cute, cute little band. And then this one I like too. This one's in bronze. This was before I did the fancy bands. Just a little cute ring. Anyway, that's it. That came out of my tumbler today. So I've tumbled, I've made paper, I've done this little paper craft stuff. I worked on my, my boarding pass that I made. Oh, I have to show that to you again. So after I had done mine, 
I thought I could make a cuter boarding pass that goes with my theme. So I took the time to learn my uh, Adobe Illustrator and I put together um, this little boarding pass. So I can also do them where I don't have them filled in. You can ignore these little blue lines in the mess because I need to clean my print head. But you get the idea of what the design looked like. So I can actually, um, this is just printed on regular paper. I could actually put this where you can download it and fussy cut it out yourself, print it on whatever you want. Or I can also um, use, I did this so it can be done on a Cricut also. This one just was printed from my printer, from my computer, but I did it as a print and cut file for my Cricut. So I can actually um, print these out and have them also cut out. If I did that, I would do it on maybe cardstock. So I may do some on cardstock um, and just have those be available too. I'm going to do, uh, at the end of this whole series, I'm going to do a drawing, and I don't know when the end date will be. It depends on how long the series goes, and then I'll probably extend it for some period of time after that, a short period. Uh, so if you comment on any of the videos in this series, you'll get entered in a drawing. And what that drawing is going to be at the end is for um, kind of, I'll call it happy mail. It's going to be just a box or package or whatever of all this kind of stuff, you know, it may have these in there. Um, any kind of extra pieces that I have uh, from this whole project. Sometimes I make multiples just so that I'm able to do a tutorial without having a craft in front of you. So it'll be that kind of stuff. It's just going to be like a whole little fun grab bag of all the parts and pieces. Um, it could have some beads. It might end up with a feather in it. It could end up with some buckles. Who knows? Just whatever I grab that went with this pro with this whole series. So comment in any of those videos as many times and you'll get your name entered every time uh, for the drawing. So I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you did, give me a thumbs up. Uh, leave something in the comments for me if you have any tips or ideas or anything, uh, and then you'll get entered. So have a great rest of your day. Now go make something. Bye.